the next gen consoles just about here and all their new features being touted, one might wonder if the PC platform is somehow being left behind, especially concerning features like Auto HDR on Xbox Series X and S, which essentially converts old games that do not have HDR into HDR presentations. In this HDR video today, I'm going to be looking at a modding system on PC that promises to do a similar thing to that and turn older SDR games into HDR ones. Since this video is mastered in HDR, I do recommend you load this up on an HDR screen with the YouTube app on your television or on your smartphone. Otherwise, you'll just be seeing the standard tone mapped SDR video on YouTube. Now that that's out of the way, let's cut to the facts. The mod I am talking about here is a more recent extension to the Special K on-screen display from the modder Kaldean. This injectable tool can do a lot and we featured it on the channel before when looking to smooth out stutters in the infamously poor Batman Arkham Knight on PC. This extension to the tool that I'm talking about though takes an SDR DX11 game and turns it into an HDR DX11 game utilizing the full brightness of your display. When I asked Haldean how it works, they described it as a conversion process of 8, 10, or 11-bit SDR buffers into FP16 HDR buffers. Alongside that greater color space and headroom, the lighting accumulation targeted in the game no longer clamps to a maximum 1.0 value in SDR. So this Special K mod basically increases the breathing room for HDR highlights to show up. The tool automatically detects the aspects of your HDR display, including its HDR nit rating, but you can control the peak white value to whatever you wish really if your display's max brightness does not actually live up to its rating. Beyond that, there are many options for tweaking, including the ability to display HDR heat maps onto the footage, which shows off which areas are getting which levels of brightness. So with nearly a decade of DX11 games to go through, I wanted to show off those that are fan favorites or ones that could particularly benefit from HDR, and also those that I can use for comparison. So I start off with Control from Remedy using its DX11 version, as it is a game with a striking visual style. DX11 of course means no ray tracing as that requires DX12. To set up HDR here, I turned on HDR in Windows and then started the Special K program before I started the game. I then turned on the global injection process. Then for my case, as Control is an Epic Game Store version here, I had to add the path to the game folder location under the Injection Config tab. This is not needed with Steam games, as Special K works automatically with them and does not require any special configuration. Then I loaded up Control DX11 and got into the main menu and hit Control, Shift, and Backspace to open the Special K UI. I went to the widgets UI element and clicked on the HDR widget. With that, you can see that the game by default is in SDR REC709, which you can then change to sRGB 16-bit HDR. For it to apply though, the game needs to be restarted. After the game restarts, the menu and game will be presenting in HDR taking advantage of your screen. And in my case, it's an NU8000 from Samsung. And every special case setting that you toggle while in-game will be saved to the game's profile where each game will have its own separate save profile. Playing the game, I noticed an immediate difference, which should be pretty obvious to those of you watching this video on an HDR display, as Control is a game that does not have HDR at all, and HDR here does quite a lot for the image. Like notice the light hitting the peak brightness outside the elevator here in this shot. When I turn on the HDR heat map from Special K, calibrated to 1000 nits, you can see how the hottest parts are localized around the light source, and there's different levels of brightness that come off it in waves or so. So HDR is indeed working like I expect it to. The actual difference between SDR and HDR though cannot be shown off in a great comparative way, as sticking an SDR recording into an HDR exported video like this is not gonna show off SDR like it would normally look. So here you'll have to trust me when I say the difference is large. But the performance impact is thankfully small. Turning on HDR at 4K native on an RTX 3090 in control at the highest settings costs 7% of the performance and adds a little bit more than one millisecond to the rendering time. So it is cheap and will be cheap across all games. Subjectively, HDR works really well in this game as control has high contrast lighting. So areas of pure and penetrable white light found across the game match the HDR presentation quite well. 
Take the Corridor of Doom as an example. These white emissive strips of light along the left hand side of the image are appropriately white and dominating in the HDR image and look really great. Likewise, the specular highlights from such bright direct sources of light have an appropriate level of brightness to them, so metals or polished floors with stark lighting look really excellent. But as I say that, the HDR just did not work perfectly necessarily, as it may require some tweaking, as I encountered a bug in my playing once that had to do with a specific thing that Special K does. There are two modes of HDR tone mapping with the Special K UI. The default one is the ACES CG standard, and then there's a pass-through tone mapping mode. When side-by-side -side in control, you can see the differences between them. The ACE SCG mode preserves the locality of the brightness on the light sources much better, I would say. On the other side, the pass-through tone mapping mode flattens the brightness across more of the image. So the image is brighter with less contrast. It is a matter of taste, of course, but I prefer the ACE SCG tone mapping in this game, although it can have the side effect on my TV that I did not like specifically in darker areas, like in the corner of the elevator. With ACE SCG, the dark area is really dark and almost pitch black actually. And this pitch black look can be found across other areas of the game that have this level of darkness. And it really doesn't look right to me. So perhaps the pass through tone mapping is actually better here. With such an oddity, we know two things about this HDR modding. Firstly, it's basically a hack and games are not designed around it, but we can also tweak things with Special K like the tone mapping here to alleviate some of these oddities. Another game I wanted to try out was Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, as my friend and colleague Tom Morgan gave it a try, and it's DX11. With Auto HDR on Xbox Series X like Tom tried out, he described how that feature was making the skies and text very bright and uncomfortably bright on the Xbox Series X. Here loading up the game using the pass-through HDR tone mapping mode, I experienced a very similar thing. Going around Majula, for example, was rough as any tiny bit of the sky on screen was really bright. I do not think those settings that I was using here would be comfortable for most people. Along with the brightness being uncomfortable, that amount of light crushes the detail in the sky itself, so you cannot see the more subtle artwork making up the sky box. Switching over to the default ACES CG tone mapping mode really helped out in Dark Souls 2, as it localizes the brightness more and offers greater image contrast which I found pleasing. So the sky was no longer so crushingly bright across the entire surface, and detail was more visible in it, which you can see well when I show the heat map visualization of the two modes here, where there's a greater gradation to the brightness in that mode. On top of that, you can actually tweak the image even more should you want. Another feature in the Special K tools is the ability to tweak the middle gray value of the image, which not a lot of HDR games actually allow you to do. The middle gray value is linked to your max luminance value and can be used to effectively compress or elongate the range of HDR highlights when in ACE SCG mode. If you push down this middle gray value in a game like Dark Souls 2 while looking at the sky, with the heat map on you can see how it lowers the overall brightness in doing so and localizes the brightest areas to more specific parts of the image. By pushing down this middle gray variable, you can also tweak the brightness of certain UI elements, which was another issue Tom mentioned in his look at Auto HDR on Xbox Series X. So just with some small adjustments, like adjusting the gray point, you can produce a very pleasing image in this game with HDR. This special K HDR can require some tweaking, but there's flexibility in the options here to get an image you might like. Another game that I tried out that Tom did as well was Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. And the first thing I noticed here when loading this up was that the default ACE SCG tone mapping completely black crushed the game's visuals. And the pass through mode in comparison though looked a lot more like one which would expect with the big flares at night and highlights coming from the searchlights. It looks really compelling actually, though it may perhaps still be a bit too contrasted and a little bit crushed. I was able to ascertain this by direct comparison with Tom's capture from Auto HDR on Xbox Series X. When doing side-by-sides here, with both calibrated for a thousand nits, I could see that the PC version at the highest settings was so much darker 
than the Xbox version. This is particularly visible when the camera zooms down to Chico in the cutscene, and the shadows are almost pitch black in the Special K version here on PC Max settings. Auto HDR has more normalized grays and shadows. Interestingly, I found out that dropping down to console settings on PC produced a less crushed image with lighter shadows. This is curious and shows a difference in implementations, I think. I presume Auto HDR is converting the HDR from the final output of the game, just one image with all the HUD and everything combined. Special K though is going to be grabbing multiple internal image targets and converting them upward. You can control which buffers are converted using the Special K GUI even. And perhaps the max settings here in Ground Zeroes produce a buffer which does not play well with this. As the max settings do add other post-processing things that the console does not have, like SSR and Bokeh Depth of Field. But that's just a theory of course. In general, when side by side and the console settings are used on PC, the HDR conversion is pretty similar actually, and just generally looks a tiny bit more saturated from what I can tell. Both look actually fine in their own right. So as mentioned, Special K does grab multiple internal buffers and converts them up to FP16 HDR. That can have some compatibility things which one needs to watch out for. For example, The Witcher 3 is a game where having Special K set to convert 11-bit buffers causes the game to crash but with 8 and 10 bit buffers selected it works incredibly well and I really loved the way the Velen sun looks at sunrise or how the metals of swords and armor glint in HDR. Other games I tried out showed similar results like Alien Isolation which is a game that I've always really wanted to see in HDR given the dramatic darkness in the game and the punctual light sources or fire that is spread across the environment in later stages. I think it looked alright, but I think it is also a little bit black crushed like I mentioned earlier due to the tone mapping, which you can see really well here in this scene when comparing the two available. Other games like Halo Reach showed similar behavior, but to a lesser degree. For example, I think Halo Reach in normal gameplay, like on the landing beach scene here, looks actually pretty great in HDR with all the highlights coming out and that dark crushing feature that I mentioned earlier not being any sort of problem. But when it gets to darker cutscenes, for example, I do get the impression still that it is overly dark. Given that tendency to have a higher contrast and crush a little bit in darker games, I would like to see another tone mapping scheme perhaps integrated, one that preserves darker parts of the image more and crushes them a tiny bit less. I think the ACES CG tone mapping works really great in a game like Dark Souls 2 as I showed earlier, or in areas like Toussaint in The Witcher 3, but it works less for visuals I think that have a lot of darkness already in the SDR presentation. Like The Witcher 3's prologue, for example, where shadows in some of the shots there look a little bit too dark for my taste. I did of course try and get Special K HDR conversion here working with other DX11 titles, but some of the core ones I wanted to try out like Frostbite Games or Arkham Knight sadly did not work. And a game like Halo 3, with its very special HDR setup internally, does not work at all actually with this Special K mod. It produces really weird images. But this is just a mod that is still work in progress, and much more compatibility will be added as time goes on. And hopefully they add in some more tone mapping modes beyond just the pass through and ACE SCG mode. In general, after trying the HDR conversion here in Special K, I am really impressed. When it does work really well, it adds a lot to a game's presentation. And the ability to tweak things like the middle grade point value or the tone mapping allow Special K HDR to avoid problems that we have seen on untweakable Auto HDR on Xbox. And I cannot wait to see how Kaldane and the community progress this mod into the future, so go check out their Patreon. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support Digital Foundry on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about Special K HDR modding on PC, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.